This one should be an interesting one. I thought I would compare pop-ups versus bottom baits for winter carp fishing. I'm in a bit of a state of shock because I've just caught a fish that I didn't know was in this lake. So I recast this morning and it's only taken about half an hour to catch that fish. So it just shows you, you know, you've got to be on the absolute right spot. A lot of the time I've been using kind of a bright pop-up in the winter just to try and get a bite really. Um, a bright bait, you know, is more visual in the face and I think a pop-up as well just stands out a little bit over your freebies. But I've never really tried bottom baits in the winter, so on this session what I thought I might do is fish them against each other on the same spot on two rods and fish over just a little spread of boilies and see which rod was going to produce more fish over a 24-hour session. So I'm down at Barron's Pond, which is in kind of um, Surrey, Sussex sort of area. I've just done 24 hours with Joe from Carpology, so look out for the video on the Carpology channel, which should be already out, I would have thought, by the time I get around to editing this one. And that's an interesting one. We had a versus match, so it was me against Joe, so you'll have to go watch that to see what happened and see who won. Uh, but this video is me on my own doing um, this little test to see which, um, which rod's gonna produce more fish in the winter. We're in February now, and we've had a, a bit of a, a warm spell, you know, we've had a week of sort of 10 degrees, so the water's just started warming up and the fish have been active. And me and Joe have both caught a few fish over the last 24 hours. So I'm hoping there's gonna be a few fish in this next 24 hours um, to hopefully make this test an interesting one for you guys. So in a minute, I'll take you through my rigs, I'll show you the bait and everything. I'll talk you through the spots that I'm fishing and probably by then it'll be dark. So hopefully through the night we'll have a few fish and if not in the morning probably going to be here till about lunchtime tomorrow so should be an interesting one guys stay tuned and i'll talk to you through the rigs in a minute right so obviously i'm using two different rigs on this session because one's a pop-up rig and the other one needs to be a bottom bait rig, obviously, because that's what I'm using, pop up and bottom bait. So the first rig that I'm gonna try is the Steve Renyard's basic complicated rig. It's basically a bit like a KD rig. You just tie a knotless knot, but the hair exits after about three turns on the whipping and then do about another five turns behind it and back through like a normal knotless knot. And you just have um, a chod style hook on there. Because I'm using mono, you want the chod style hook so that it doesn't close the gape too much. There's a mono only rule on this venue, so that's why I'm using mono hook links. And I've just got an amino ester bottom bait as my bait on that one. And that's what my freebies are going to be as well. So that is match the hatch. And my other rig, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I normally prefer a withy pool rig, which is another of Steve Renyard's inventions. Um, but obviously with it being mono only, I need to use a mono pop-up rig. So the only one that I can really think of that will do the job is a hinge stiff rig. So that's what I've got on this one. I've got a yellow amino ester pop-up. Um, so it matches the freebies in terms of flavor, but it is a bright yellow one and it is popped up off the bottom. So it'd be interesting to see whether the pop-up is gonna outfish the bottom bait. So I'm gonna get these rods out now I'll talk you through the spots and I'm going to show you my freebies because I've prepped them in a specific way for winter fishing so I'll talk you through that after I've got the rods out and I've shown you my spots. Right guys, hopefully you saw where those rigs landed then. Um, but I just thought I'd very, very quickly talk you through where I'm fishing. So I'm on the point swim, which is peg two, I think, on this lake. And I'm fishing over to the far margin. So it's about 60 yards over to here. You've got these two trees here, 
I'm just fishing towards the right hand one, so there's one rod just slightly left and one rod just slightly to the right of that tree. And I'm quite close to the bank, probably about eight foot off it, I suppose, just at the bottom of the sort of marginal shelf, really. And it's nice and clear along there, and the fish do seem to patrol up and down there. So I've just cast both rigs within a couple of feet of each other. And then the next job is I'll walk around and just put a few baits over the top, just so I've got a little spread, probably only about 12 to 15 baits, and that'll be the rod set for the night. So once I've done that, I'll um, show you the boilies that I'm using. Right, so here's my boilies, and you'll notice that they're swimming in water there. So basically what I've figured was in the winter, the carp are quite slow moving and they don't want to eat lots of food that's going to fill them up. So what I've done is I've washed out my baits in boiling water here to make them really soft so the carp can easily smash them up and digest them. But what I've also done is I've added some of the amino ester food liquid to that so that they're washed out but then also I've got the flavour put back into them so they're highly flavoured but really mushy so when the carp come in and eat them they pass through the fish really quickly and don't really fill them up but they've still got all the flavour that you want to attract the fish because I'm only using a very small amount of bait so you know 10 to 15 baits over two rods I think is enough for a bite at this time of year and these baits won't fill the fish up because there's no solid lumps once the fish have chewed them they just go to mush and pass it straight through and then they want to come back and eat a few more. Right, so that's everything done. I've got my rods out on that far margin there. I've been around, put a little bit more bait out there. The ducks have been a bit of a pain on this session, so every time I go and put bait out, they're straight on it, and I've been getting loads of uh, bleeps where they've been picking up my rigs. But luckily with these rigs, they're fairly good at resetting themselves. And when I've been winding in, the baits have been still on there and everything. So I'm fairly confident that I should still um, be, pre be presented out there. Um, and I've just got that little patch of bait on the margin. So if any fish come along the margin, they should find that and hopefully have a little feed. And actually one's just shown very close to one of my rods now. So that's a good sign. We're coming into the dark now. I'm losing the light, so I'm not gonna be able to film anymore for you. So we'll see what the night brings and let's see what's better, the pop-up or the bottom bait. Right guys, good morning. I'm in a bit of a state of shock because I've just caught a fish that I didn't know was in this lake. I was talking to the bailiffs yesterday, telling me about the stock and stuff. They said there was a common that had been out at 30 pounds before but hadn't been seen for a long time. And I've just had a common this morning and it's just under 28 pounds. So I think it might be the one that we're talking about. It's £27.14. And interestingly, it was caught on the match the hatch bottom bait. So it's the only fish I've had so far. Been a slow night, but I don't care because this fish has more than made up for it. Ah, look at that. That is a proper Old English dark common from Barron's Pond. Absolutely made up. It wiped out my other rod, so I'm gonna have to get both rods back out after this, but there's a few hours left in the session, so hopefully I can wangle another one or two. But if not, I don't really care, because um, I'm made up with that for February. So yeah, I'm just gonna get some pictures and get it back and I'll give you a quick update of uh, what happened during the night. Right, so as you can see, we're in the bivvy. Uh, it's been on and off raining since I had that fish and actually most of the night, so I didn't get a lot of sleep. But yeah, we're in the bivvy now just to keep the camera dry and everything. So basically through the night, 
during the rain, you know, I was obviously awake and I was getting the odd single bleep on the rods. And um, I couldn't help thinking maybe I've gone a bit tight to that far margin and maybe the fish were patrolling up and down a little bit further off. And then I looked in my notebook from last time I came here and I saw that I was fishing at 14 wraps. Now the bailiff had told me 14 and a half was the distance to the far margin, so that's what I've been fishing. But um, I moved it back to 14 wraps because I figured if I was getting liners, maybe the fish are going through the lines and not quite getting to the rig. So bringing it back, you know, it sort of brings it into where the fish are. So I recast this morning um, quite early, you know, about six o'clock just as it was getting light. And it's only taken about half an hour to catch that fish. So it just shows you, you know, you've got to be on the absolute right spot. You, you might be in the right area, but if you're not pinpointing where those fish are actually feeding, there's a good chance you aren't going to catch anything. And actually, when I was winding in, I was getting the odd bit of leaf matter and stuff. So I was definitely too close to the margin over there. But bringing it back, you know, has brought it into that sort of clear zone at the bottom of the shelf where the fish, I think, are moving up and down feeding. I didn't put any more bait out. I just put a little bag of, um, of boilies on just to sort of stop tangles and just to make sure there was a little bit of bait around the hook bait. And yeah, it was a mega fight, absolutely crazy. I wish I could have filmed it for you, but you know, it was kind of raining and the camera was in the bivy and I, I couldn't really get back to bring the camera out into the rain and try and set it up whilst playing a fish like that. You know, it was a mental fight. It was going on long runs and left and right. And then, it, yeah, it must've been about sort of 25 minutes to get it in, which was really exciting. And I'm absolutely buzzing to have caught a fish like that in February. Biggest common in the lake, I believe, from what I'm told. And um, I think the only fish that's bigger in here is a ghost either called Poppy that's about 31 pound. So yeah, I feel over the moon to have caught that. I'm a bit gutted I didn't catch it in the match with um, Joe from Carpology yesterday, because that would have been cool to get in a match, you know, and it would have helped with my weight quite a lot to win the match, but you know, uh, I'm still not complaining. So yeah, I've got the rods back out again now, back on that far margin with fresh hook baits and everything. I haven't put any more bait out there, just a single on the pop-up and, um, and a little bag on the uh, bottom bait just to stop it tangling really, because it does tend to happen when you're just using a bottom bait on its own. Um, but there's probably still a bit of bait left out there from when I put some bait out yesterday. So yeah, we've got, uh, I think about three hours of the session left. I'm gonna start sort of tidying up and that, but um, I'm gonna be sticking it out till the end. So hopefully we can get another fish or, or even two if we're very lucky. Um, I don't think it's really been a fair test of pop-ups against bottom baits, but I did catch on the bottom bait, so it shows that that does work in the winter. It's more about getting it in the right place and using rigs that you're confident in. Um, and yeah, what more can I say? I'm really happy with what's happened, so we'll see what happens the rest of the session, guys. <coughs> and I'll keep you posted. Right, guys. I'm going to have to cut the video short because I've just looked at my ferry booking back to the Isle of Wight and I've only got two hours to get there and the lake is about an hour away from the ferry port and obviously it takes quite a while to pack up so I'm going to have to get going hopefully not miss my ferry guys I hope you've enjoyed the video shame I didn't have a few more fish to show you to kind of compare the tactics but having the biggest common in the lake in the winter I can't, can't complain really I'm really happy with that hopefully the tactics and tips in this video have helped you in your fishing as well. Don't forget to leave a comment if you've got any other tips that you can think of for winter carp fishing or what, what tactic you think works best in the winter. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video as well. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time.